Hi, good morning, everyone. Today we're going to do another voltage drop example based on rule 8102 in the electrical code for Canada. In this example, it's a little bit uh, more challenging in that they don't give us a wire size. They give us the amperage that the load is and the distance that the load is from the panel. But it doesn't tell us what size wire. And so we're going to have to re, uh, reverse engineer our formula from table D3 a little bit to find our answer. Now, if you recall on the other video, uh, we went through table D3 and we talked about the fact that the table was based on a 1% voltage drop, a voltage from the supply of 120 volts, a single phase circuit and copper wire. Now, anytime we change any one of those parameters, we have to adjust for it. This question specifically talks about supplying a load from a panel. So we know that's a branch circuit. And when we look at voltage drop, we know that in a branch circuit, we're allowed a maximum of 3% voltage drop. So what they're trying to do is limit the, the voltage drop so that we get most of this 240 volts at the load, even though we're going a long ways with our, with our conductors. So for this example, we're going to use our standard uh, voltage drop uh, formula for table D3. It's distance in meters equals the table D3 basic number for um, out of the table for meters times the voltage drop. And in this case, we're gonna adjust from 1% to 3% and the distance correction factor. So that's a comparison of how much ampacity the wire is actually using compared to the, what the load requires. And then over here, we're going to put the 240 volts for this particular circuit over top of 120 to adjust that formula to, to work for 240 volts. So given this, I had 150 meters in my question is equal to, uh, and I'll have to find this in table D3, that's a missing element, times the voltage drop of three. And remember, we don't go decimal zero three, we just use the full three uh, percent there. And now what we're gonna do is estimate the distance correction factor. And I mentioned that in the distance correction factor table, the values are always really, really close to a value of one, slightly under or slightly above. So when we don't know what size wire, we put a one in there and that gets us close to this number. And then we have to come back and double check using the full distance correction factor calculation and, and finding the right number. And over here it was 240 divided by 120 to adjust for 240 volt circuit. So the only number I'm missing in here is it is the basic meters from table D3. And if I divide 150 meters by all of this stuff, I'll end up with the number that I'm gonna go look in table D3 for. And that works out to be 25 meters. So then when I get into table D3, <clears throat> we go back to the question, we had a 53 amp load, and we know that we need 25 meters from the table. So running down the left-hand side, I go to at least 53, and I have to go to the next one above that. So in this case, it's 63. Then I run across until I get to at least the number that I had found for my basic meters from table D3. In this case, it works out to be exactly 25. And I look up and it tells me I have to use a one odd conductor if I'm gonna go that far. So let's go back and look at the proof for this. So I went to table D3. I looked up um, at least 53 amps, made me go to 63, then I'd size up. And I was looking for the 25 meters that I found here. And that told me to use a one out wire. So now I'm gonna go back and actually redo this calculation using the values 
for the proper DCF value for the one out wire. So to find the DCF for a one out wire, I go to table two and because in my question I was actually told that they wanted a TWU. And TWU, if I go to table 19, is a 60 degree insulation rating. So when I go to table two, I want to look up the opacity based on 60 degree insulation rating. And in table uh, two, I would find that that wire is good for 125 amps. Now my load was 53 amps. The wire is good for 125 amps. Just like the last example, this is a huge difference. We only need 53 amps running out to the load, but in order to reduce our voltage drop, we're going to use a larger conductor, less resistance. And so the amount or the percentage of that wire that's actually being used for the load is 42.4%. I mentioned also last time that we have to round up. We can't use 42 exactly and we do not round down. So I'm going to go to the DCF table and look for 50% uh, usage on that conductor and also 60 degrees. And I'm going to find that my actual DCF is 1.09. So let's go over here and have a little look. All right, so right here in the table, DCF table, tells us to use the rated conductor insulation. And for TWU, that's 60 degrees. And we had calculated it as 50% of the conductor is being used for the load. And my DCF then was 1.09. We take that 1.09. And we put it in our formula. So the 25 meters from table D3 times 3% voltage drop times the distance correction factor of 1.09 times 2 because of the adjustment for 240 volts. That tells us that that one on table can be used for a maximum of 163.5 meters. We only want to go 150 meters. So this one up cable would be just fine because it's rated in these conditions to go a little bit further, even 165, uh, 3.5 meters. I hope that makes sense. I'll talk to you soon.